Hello, beautiful souls. We have rebranded. So welcome to the Soul Manifestation Podcast. Um, Flying high on consciousness is still deep in my heart. I started it during COVID as a passion project. And then I stopped coming on the podcast for a while in a deep journey of myself. And then we came back and it just, I felt like something else was needed. And so it's now called the Soul Manifestation Podcast because we're still all about consciousness and expanding. But how do we actually bridge that gap of consciousness from the higher realms into the 3D reality? And that is manifestation. It is creation. And I don't know about all y'all, but like for me, I love growing and expanding and learning. And I also love the feedback in my 3D reality. That is the manifestation. So yeah, it's great and dandy to just like have downloads, but if they're not integrated, then nothing shifts in our reality. And it's, it's different to have knowledge than it is to have wisdom. Wisdom is embodied knowledge. And that's what I'm all about. And that is the core of manifestation, which is creation in this realm. So it starts in the etheric realms and it comes down. Anywho, I had a massive, massive download (laughs) that I'm going to share with you. It was like um, so many epiphanies of my life journey. And I was talking to, and money and manifestation. And I was talking to my book publisher and book coach today. And I was like, we got to change the whole lens of the book because there are so many pieces that I now understand that I didn't understand before. And really like why I chose my traumas. And I chose my family and I chose to go through a lot of the challenges and initiations that I've been through, there's always a reason. And I'll be sharing pieces, again, threading in and out of these episodes about that. So you can start to look at these areas of your life. And there was a code that I have been trying to crack for so long. And I cracked it a couple of weeks ago. And in a nutshell, it's that I was still enabling people in a way of trying to save them. I had this massive fond response. Sorry, my dog is very distracting. Opal, come here. Okay, so I had this massive fond response where I was trying to save everybody and like bring them up in levels of consciousness. But the integrated way to do that is to actually call them up and show them their power. And so teaching them to fish instead of giving them a fish or trying to give everyone fishes. And this is the same for money. So there was this pattern that I realized I'm actually going to read you something I wrote to a friend. And then I'm going to read you what I wrote to my mentor in terms of an epiphany I had. Okay. So the download I had a couple of weeks ago was this in a nutshell. When we give people free stuff always because they are poor, in quotes, creating a reflection of being broke, we've not helped them change the program and subconscious beliefs, actions, and habits that they're poor, aka poverty and victim mentality and mindset and identity have created. So it massively enables them when we give them a few fish, but never taught them to fish, then they have they, they haven't invested to take the tools and to implement them to learn. And this was so big for me because I realized I would like tell people really high level advice or I would channel for them. And every single time it was free, they wouldn't apply it. They wouldn't use it. They didn't value it. And it was dishonoring me actually and my gifts and my, not just my gifts. I've turned in my gifts into a trade. I've spent thousands of hours mastering these gifts. And and I still spend a lot of time training and mastering them every single day. But it was, I was enabling them because I was trying to save them. But there is an initiation that takes place. And part of that initiation is an initiation with source. And so this is the download that I had um, last weekend. It felt like I was like journeying on plant medicine, which I was not. Um, I um, I have my views about plant medicine. Personally, I don't recommend it for a number of reasons. Um, it can be used as a crutch and with dark forces and, and the things that can infiltrate it. 
another podcast for another podcast. Anyways, um, it felt like I was journeying though, like on a shamanic breathwork journey even, but I wasn't, I was sober and lying in bed and in this cocoon. And I was just seeing so much from the quantum field. This has happened to me a number of times and I'll be like six hours, like at night when I'm kind of between like sleep wake state and all these downloads come. And so after that, I was journaling and this is what came through from the messages and, and images that I got there and the coding and understandings, consciousness levels that I got from that. I had this massive epiphany. I was having a fear, by the way, before that night, and I really went into it and alchemized it. Um, I taught this on my masterclass series of soul aligned abundance of what was kind of going on on a deep level and how these threads will show up when we're ready to alchemize them. And so it was a deep money initiation because something was being illuminated in my field to be transmuted to get to the next level. And this is how it works. So I was messaging my mentor about the fear and it was the fear that if I'm essentially, if I'm not hustling, 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 then I won't be provided for. So if like I'm showing up and I'm hustling and, you know, I'm like working long days, then I will be provided for. But if I take some time to rest, then I won't be provided for by source or by any funnel. And I'm like, whoa, this is like playing under my business. Cause it'll, it'll be like, um, lots of giving, 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 serving clients, channeling, um, teaching courses, and then an abundance will come in. And then it will be like a lull when I'm like in my rest phase, which is part of the cycle that we need to honor that my body is like, and soul is like, honor this. And there's been many other illuminations and initiations for another podcast that I can talk about what other signs I've had. Um, and even with my cycle, but this is what we're going to talk about today. So that fear that I just mentioned was something so much deeper. We've been looking through the wrong lens as a collective. So it's actually about being able to thrive instead of survive or struggle to survive. Being resourced at the end of the day at its core is having full access to being resourced to life force energy to our pure essence, including my energy, my intuition, creativity, personal power, and my focus. And so people are trying to look through this lens of get money, get money, but money weaves in because it can support these things. And, it, and when these things are compromised is when we essentially in our life force is compromised and our ability to manifest and create is compromised. So I journaled on a couple pages about this. Oh, and I'm going to make a reel. So we'll get on the reel. Haven't done that yet. As a collective, people are sacrificing their soul for money. And they're looking through the long, the wrong lens. They want provision and to thrive and have full access to what I mentioned before, creativity, personal power, intuition, their life force energy and focus. But instead of looking through that lens, they're looking through the lens of how can I make money to survive? By the way, sneeze for the truth. <laughs> it's a cosmic sign when anybody sneezes that they're speaking truth. I was going to cut that out, but then I was like, no, I'm going to keep sneeze for the truth in. So, but instead of looking through the lens, they are looking through the lens of how can I make money to survive or for ego, aka covering up a trauma of a belief system of I'm not worthy enough without this. So I'm going to show them that's trauma instead of how they can have full access to those things and receive an alignment with their soul's work. So many haven't been trying to manifest from their soul and alignment. They've been entrapped looking through the wrong lens of how can I get money? How can I make money? What can I do in order to receive? All of that is manipulation, which is 0 0.9 frequencies. Frequency hurts on the frequency bandwidth scale. It's the same frequency as pain and it is the same frequency as um, pain disease, 
cancer, specifically 0.9, and uh, manipulation and fear. Those are all 0.9. So when we're looking through the lens of fear, if even if fear is driving you, as I realized that fear was driving me on another level, then we're still looking through the wrong lens. And the more I look through this lens of what gives me access to my personal power, what supports me, gives me access to my intuition, my creativity. And this can look in the tangible world. Like, okay, if I'm teaching or doing a client session and I, what, what do I need to have full access to that? Okay. I need support. I, meaning I need some, like a dog walker to bring my dog out so I can focus or I need healthy nourishing food or I need a place that gives me expansiveness that I can tune and tap in. I need teachers um, and my own mentors to help like hold these pillars of things that they've gone through and help me walk the way as they've walked it and are continuing to walk it. Um, essentially guides I need that yeah investments for my team and for my bookkeeper and accountant and lawyer and all of these things and the trainings that I've taken and continue to take I always have a like I right now I have a coach a mentor and a teacher and they're all for different areas of my life but also all areas of my life and these things are really important to me and they're a big investment and they help me help more people. But if I were just to show up and give a bunch of free calls, firstly, people don't implement if they haven't invested. It's a universal spiritual law. Secondly, I would be compromising those things. So I would be compromising my personal power. And I did this for so long and it made me really, really energetically weak. And the more I stopped doing that, the stronger I got and the more I was actually able to cause shifts and transformation in clients and they would have really massive wins. Anyways, so I sent her some voice memos, which I'm not going to read. Um, actually, well, yeah. So then I had another epiphany and it said, OMFG. <laughs> This is actually deeper than provision. Source is crazy with the lessons and divine timing for teaching. Oh my God. It's about women and men, souls, but specifically women was um, an epiphany that I was having here. Claiming their sovereignty back and not selling their soul for money or provision or for false feeling of feeling special on a superficial level. So it's about women claiming their sovereignty back and not selling their soul for money or provision or a false feeling of feeling special on a superficial level or even feeling safe. The safety comes from the inside and it is mirrored exteriorly. I cannot tell you how many fears I have transmuted and then my external reality just provided miracles whether this is like money whether this is my dog is so cute right now I literally cannot even whether this is um you know being given a place to stay like so I've had so many miracles especially before I applied these tools to money when I was traveling and like didn't have places to stay and somehow I'd always manifest them, but they always came with these soul initiations, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, in my masterclass series, I was talking about how so many people, including myself in the past have done things for money. For me, it was restaurant jobs where they told me to dress in shorter skirts and a, men touching me was deemed normal. And one of my jobs was working for an investment banker and he sexually abused me. And in order to, and I stayed working for him for a while in order to make money to provide for myself because I was so deeply seated in fear and all my thought patterns and all my actions were also deeply seated in fear, including like staying and working with him or staying at these restaurant jobs. But that's a trap. It's a trap. 
third time's a charm, it's a trap. We're going deeper. And when I decided to stop doing things layer by layer that were out of alignment with my soul, meaning all the jobs I just talked about, anytime I felt reliant on a man and didn't actually purely want to be with him, but he was providing, also a trap. When I decided to stop doing things layer by layer that were out of alignment, then a big catalyst and a big catalyst was an ex being physically abusive. And I was living with him in Florida with no job. And I walked out and that's when I decided to learn about money and abundance in a spiritual way and the codes of the universe and piece by piece started choosing myself and say no to that, which was unaligned. That was the choice that I made when I left. And I literally manifested a place to stay, a beautiful place to stay um, with wonderful people who were out of town while I was feeding their fish in their mansion, <laughs> literally. Um, it was like a temple mansion. It was beautiful. And I decided I need to dig into my money stuff and my money traumas and alchemize them and learn all the universal codes and apply, apply them. And I started doing it and I scaled my business from like $400 a month. And then all of a sudden it was like 2000 and then doubled that to 4,000. And then 5,000 was the big kicker for me. I'm most proud of that month. And then we've gotten up to $68,000 in sales a month and 50 K cash. I'm more proud of the 5,000 jump though, because that was facing my deepest, deepest ones that I have probably faced. Um, so these tools can be applied to any, any level, but the important thing is that I started to choose myself and piece by piece, things started to align. And after I tracked this, every choice and initiation, I'm going to share another one here. I was blessed by the universe, by source, for honoring myself. I even had to fire two clients who wanted to date me after sessions a couple of years back. I was doing sessions in my apartment and we were doing shamanic breath work and energy work. And um, they both told me they were in love with me. And I had to look at some stuff within there of how was I like projecting this. But anyways, I'm like, we cannot work together anymore. I do not feel the same way. And I just kept it really professional and I refunded. Um, one was at the end of a package, but then the other one still had sessions and I refunded his money for the rest of the sessions. And I was so scared because I'm like, how am I going to pay rent next month? And I literally doubled my revenue the next month. Pay attention to these threads. At the core, it's about teaching women to not abandon themselves for provision. My whole life story. No more exclamation because when we trust ourselves and source and act in alignment we receive more provision and I'm the living evidence and embodiment of it and this initiation had to happen for me to see this on a deeper level there have been many for centuries women have essentially been sex slaves in one way or another to their husbands to their bosses etc and they couldn't even have bank accounts. And I've had to and will continue to see deeper layers of this and experience the liberation as I claim my sovereignty more and more and align more and more to my purpose of soul sovereignty, soul manifestation, not manipulating matter against source, which goes into dark forces, which is another conversation. 
soul manifestation, what your soul really wants. If you are abandoning your soul to, for example, be, you know, provided to live in a really nice place, that's a soul entrapment. That's not manifestation from source. It's actually the web of black magic that you're getting entangled in. Again, more about that later, which brings really dense energies to your life that you don't want. Trust me. Um, been there, done that. Unknowingly, of course. Every time I abandoned my soul, I was in those dark energies and I didn't understand what was going on. That is why I had all the visions of women claiming their sovereignty back and calling back aspects of their soul and dancing together. I knew how deeply it was connected to money and provision and the self-abandoning occurs there. And the self-abandoning that occurs there. So I see so many women self-abandoning because somebody they're dating or who's providing for them or a boss who's sexually abusive or an investor who actually wants more than to support your mission is providing resources and then they abandon themselves. This is manipulation. Again, love is 385 frequency hertz. So if we're in love and true creation with source, soul creation, the higher self and source, then we're vibrating at 385 versus 0.9 hertz. Do you see how weak 0.9 hertz is? But most people are in fear and that is 0.9 hertz. Same as manipulation. When we're in fear, we manipulate. We try and manipulate matter in the field. And I had this vision a little bit ago when I was on a whole redirect, seeing deeper layers of the truth and, and a lot of false light was being illuminated as it still is in humanity. Anywho, so I saw this vision of these women and they were all dancing for men. And then I saw a shift and they literally saw their soul fragments coming back energetically. And then all of a sudden they had this essence and they were dancing for the divine and they had boundaries and standards. And now the men had to rise into love and the men were angry at first. I'm not saying this is all men. I'm just saying, this is what I was seeing on a collective level overall distortions that I am meant to illuminate and help people become liberated from and claim their sovereignty back on the deepest soul level and manifest miracles in their life. So they claimed it back and then they were dancing, allowing the divine to dance through them. And one by one, the men started to rise in the divine masculine. And then they were holding the feminine. There was like this deep honoring and dance going on. It was so beautiful. And then the feminine was rising more and the masculine was rising more and we were rising together. And so that's why I had these visions of this, of claiming our souls back. And I know um, women who, I mean, many women like investors are like investing in them and, and expecting more. And they're like having to give over their bodies and think they have to, or working at jobs where even if there's like no weird, funky, like sexual distortion and stuff where they, um, which like is a complete dishonoring of the feminine, but anywho, where their soul is like dying. I worked in an office when I was 17 and my soul literally felt like it was dying. And I'm like, okay, that's when I made my decision. I was going to become an actor and, you know, like went through that path of soul expansion. And there was many synchronicities there, which I'll share more about and symbolism in certain TV shows that I was a part of that I had to see certain threads to do the, actually the work I do now. Um, yeah, so I'm seeing so many years back in the past year, why my soul chose so many experiences, even sexual abuse to experience these lessons, to see and viscerally know the contrast. I said, oh my goodness, I'm going to like not disclose part of this. So this is why I had to see so deeply the shadow aspects and the depths of fear that a lot of people in my life are going through. And I can literally witness them self-abandoning um, for provision, 
when their greater level of provision, aka more money, more resources, more support actually will come when they stop abandoning themselves. And it's deeply rooted in a need to survive, but it's a trap. I'm supposed to help women get out of this trap. This is why source gave me abundance miracles, like miracles in the hardest moments when I had the courage to choose me instead of money. I.e. when I told those male clients I could no longer work with them and refunded them a couple of years back, I doubled my income the next month. That was a gift from source showing me to keep choosing me and that I'm supposed to teach others this and the vision of the money entrapments um, that I just shared with you. Oh, just kidding. This is another vision. It makes sense on a deeper level now. So this vision essentially was something I saw. I saw this the crystalline web and then I saw the infiltration of like the darker energies um, of manipulation and dark forces and, and whatnot. And so all of a sudden I saw the crystalline web and it was like, it turned into like money. And then um, I saw the black web weaving in and it was like alluring people. And then it was like a trap, a trap, a trap. And then they, they, it was certain jobs, which I'm not going to mention. It wasn't me. It was other people who I know. And they were saying yes to these things. And those jobs were actually really harmful to others and humanity and the structures of the systems and the powers that be. And so they were dealing with like all these health issues and and I'm like, oh my God, they think that that is the only pathway to their abundance. <clears throat> and then I saw a timeline where they said no to that. And then all these pathways of abundance and all this money started appearing and all these opportunities. But the thing is we have to start saying no, it's an initiation of the things that don't align. And so that's what I was talking about. As soon example, if, um, if somebody is investing in your business, um, I know women going through this. So, uh, the, and the investor wants more. And it's not actually from. I actually want to invest in your business, but I have sexual desires, and now I'm I'm like manipulating you so that you will like give over your body to me. The moment she says no, all these other opportunities are going to appear elsewhere for soul aligned abundance. But until she says no, same thing with a job. Until she says no, she's trapped that feels like your soul is dying that you're like, I'm not supposed to be doing this like data input or like, I'm not supposed to be doing um, like whatever it is. Maybe it's like <clears throat> you're coding computers and you're good at it, but your soul doesn't love it, but somebody else's soul loves it. So until you say no to that, the other opportunities can't exist until you say no to certain clients that are out of align, the other, the other, you have no space to even call on aligned clients. And this is what I said. This is why I've gotten random. They're not random gifts shortly after every time I made a choice, even though it's, I don't know what I'm saying there. This is why I've gotten random gifts shortly after every time I've made a choice to say no to something out of alignment and yes to only soul alignment. They were clues and winks from the universe. This is not exclusive to money, by the way. This is relationship as well. We get what we tolerate. We get what we tolerate. And if we are abandoning our soul, we're tolerating literally abuse often. Whether that's energetically or elsewhere. And I, by abuse, it doesn't need to look like humanity depicts abuse. Abuse could be like manipulation of emotions. It could be gaslighting. It could be, you know, lying and cheating and all of these things. Like that's still abuse. And it's also reflection. So it means you're abusing yourself if you're getting abused in one of the eight areas of life. And it will be in another area. Um, it will appear in another area. Then you're doing that to yourself. And it will be the area that you care about the most that it will be mirrored back. So <laughs> another epiphany. My mentor is like, are you? <laughs> Anyways, I was like, I sent you an essay. She actually didn't say that. She's like, I'm loving reading these. I'm like, I 
So my whole life just changed. So this is why I can't give all my wisdom away to everyone and anyone on the internet. I had epiphany the other day that I give away way too much free stuff, whether it's just like people calling me asking for me to like channel for them or, or like want free sessions, like stop doing that a while ago. But when I give away so much, even like my masterclass series, I was like, I gave away a lot and it was really powerful, but I didn't let people, I could have condensed it into a smaller segment because they actually, some of the depth of the wisdom that I gave away, there needs to be an initiation for them to choose themselves. And I'll explain this in a second. So I gave like nine hours of transmissions and clearings, but they haven't fast passed the first initiation on choosing them. I learned a big lesson. That is the first initiation. God rewards those who reward themselves. God takes care of those who take care of themselves. It's a, it's a hundred, hundred. You, we have to put in a hundred and God will put it in a hundred. That is the first initiation. They have to choose them and choose to invest, or they haven't shown source that they're claiming their sovereignty and no longer being a slave to the system and self-abandoning. But the investment portion is the first choosing. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. This is why source provided the money when I went to Cyprus after I decided to go study energy healing and didn't have the money. I, I'm not sure if I told you, but the acting check came in the mail 24 hours later. I didn't think I was going to get that check because it was a bio. And if you don't get it within six months, you're probably not getting it because the commercial didn't air. But anyways, it aired. Divine timing was not a coincidence. Legit, every time I chose something for my soul's growth right after... I, right after I choose, source provides the resources, but only after I choose me and have faith. God or source always provides the resources for an investment that is for our soul growth. Always, always, always. I have seen and witnessed this in my own life, in client's life, but it doesn't come until we decide and choose us. So that is the initiation, my loves, is to start choosing us, showing ourselves that we are worthy of actually investing in ourselves. We're sending this message to the universe. Nobody's going to invest in us if we don't invest in ourselves because everything is a mirror, including a partner. If you have a partner who's like not fully choosing you, not fully invested in you, it's because you're not choosing yourself and you're not taking action to choose yourself. Every time I'm like, I want to work with that teacher. I want to work with that mentor. I need support in my business. I have to make that choice from like, oh my goodness, like where's the money going to come? Or I have enough for the next couple of months, but where's the rest? And every time without fail, more of the money comes. But it's after I make that choice and I'm showing the universe in real time that I'm choosing myself. There's lots of nuances to this. And if you want the toolkit, please please, please look below at the show notes on surrendering into abundance. Um, that is my course, my portal. It's There's 28 hours of transmissions in there and teachings and activations and rewirings. Um, and we're doing three live calls as well. So it'll be over 30 hours, probably around 33 hours by the end of the course. The doors close soon. Um, they're closing in October. So yeah please look into that october 18th to be precise but i might move it a couple of days don't this is not your excuse to wait if you're interested go look at the testimonials i give the whole process on exactly the lens that i look through and how i make these choices and how i shift the energy and come into full alignment how i rewrite belief systems and clear um clear any stuck clear any stuck energy. This makes no sense how I'm saying it. Stuck energy in every piece of stagnant energy, sanskara, which is Sanskrit for trauma, which literally directly translates to stuck energy. There is a belief system and how you shift that is on a visceral level and the tools are in the course and on the live calls we'll also be doing 
a shamanic breath work for it that will change your life. I've been told they are more powerful than plant medicine. And I also very strongly agree. It has been for me too. So whew. this part is really good. Trying to quote, save everyone and to heal them without them first choosing them is a trap. That's the initiations, my loves, because they first need to choose them and choose to be a victor and a creator of their life. I've also realized that there's a ton of manifestation teachers that are teaching to manifest or create money or resources or trips through manipulation of self, abandoning self, of others, manipulating others or of the universal laws, specifically the natural law. You can get what you want on an ego level through this type of manifestation, but it's an entrapment. If you're doing it with this, it's an entrapment of the soul because it's using dark forces through manipulation and fear of self or others instead of earning it through source, aka learning the soul lesson. You earn things through source by learning the soul lesson and integrating it. Honoring yourself is a soul lesson. For example, helping and acting in alignment. Just like the sexual distortion stuff, more on another podcast, the ones using it through manipulation are actually using dark forces. So people are teaching sex magic that's, that is distorted pure sex magic is very powerful through the light but a lot of people are teaching it through manipulation of and and actually hijacking other people's free will and they're doing it through dark forces it's a trap and that's why i don't resonate on a soul level with some of these teachers who are very famous out there who are teaching it through this now i said i do have a spiritual teacher and a, a couple and who are amazing based truly in the frequency of love and source and consciousness and expansion and not through manipulation. I've learned massive discernment on this through my own lessons and initiations. You can tell if a teacher or a mentor is teaching it through manipulation if you feel like they are entrapped in their soul. That's how I discern. And I can tell in an instant. I can tell in an instant. It's all over their energy body. This is why for a while I stopped talking about manifestation because I, I didn't resonate with certain teachings on it that are based in manipulation. And I just started talking about healing and alignment, which is key. But then I got a lot of people who wanted to be saved or I was trying to save a lot of people. So they were projecting that energy back to me which was also enabling them because the choice of choosing self and investing in self is absolutely non, a non-negotiable initiation for them. They're showing the universe with action and faith that they choose them and their soul sovereignty. They're investing literally an energy called money into them. It's a soul, sacred soul contract with the universe when you're like, I'm going to do this. I know for myself, when I don't invest, I don't value it. I don't actually transform. I invest highly in coaches and mentors who are in alignment and teachers because, and that literally ignites something in me that like almost like it pulls me to do the work. It pulls me to do the inner work. It pulls me to apply the tools and concepts that they're teaching because it's uncomfortable sometimes, but pulls me to do that because I've already invested and I don't want to lose that investment. I want to amplify it which by the way, the money always amplifies if you actually apply the things. Um, and money likes to grow. It's a universal law. So invest instead of just spending two different frequencies. I wrote down a few weeks ago, if an investment is for a soul growth, soul source always provides the resources. But after we make the choice, even in the acting industry and dropping at a corporate, so basically... Um, 
when I dropped out of corporate, I ended up like booking a movie because I was like, I want to go to acting school. And that wasn't a coincidence that those things, that the role, which I shouldn't have been able to book, didn't have an agent, was up against thousands of other girls all over the States, all over Canada. And somehow I booked this role. It was like pretty big. But that was providing me resources because I had made that choice to be like, I'm not doing corporate. And it was also part of my sole mission to see the depths of what's going on in the acting industry in Hollywood on Netflix. Um, I doubled on Sabrina for two years and again, stories for another podcast. So that is my epiphany. And another one is, I'm not going to read all of this, but the the circle can't be broken. Investing in those who invest in you. Everything is an energy exchange. I did a pod, um, a reel on this today, which I'll post in the next couple of days of even if there's no money involved because money doesn't actually exist, but we have to learn how to translate this energy. It's like a stored, it's a stored, it's stored value is what it's supposed to represent. And there's distortions around that. But anyways, it's supposed to represent that. So who are you investing in? Where are you investing your time, your energy, your gifts, your resources? I invest in those who invest in me and I see they're showing up and doing the work. I started to look through the filter of what's, if I'm here to make the biggest difference on this planet, I need to be fully resourced in my power and my intuition and my creativity in my ability to focus and that means I have to be able to pay my team abundantly. That means I have to be able to provide a life of nourishment for myself. That means I have to be able to invest in my gifts. That means I have to be very conscious of where I'm spending my time and energy. That means I'm no longer willing to invest my gifts. I don't care if somebody's paying me. I won't let them pay me. I'm no longer to invest my gifts in somebody who isn't actually going to show up and apply the tools and do the work. And I've been very blessed actually, because I, my private clients for the last couple of years have been like off the charts, amazing because I set energetic grids and the declarations of levels of tolerance. And I'm just tightening in on that even more because I want my gifts and my wisdom to go through those who value it and are going to apply it and it to feel like a good energy exchange for both. That's who I invest in when I am learning skills or getting guidance and I fully apply that. And that is the declaration that I'm making to Stephen Titan in the people who are coming into my world who want to work with me privately. And I will no longer, I actually shifted this a couple of years ago um, and I'm tightening in on it, actually apply my like channeling to anybody who is doing harm with their business on the planet. It's like, I want to help businesses and I want to help entrepreneurs and I want to help healers and I want to help people who see the vision, holding the vision of co-creation and of the highest timeline of all areas and living in the frequency truly of love, of honor. Money, by the way, too, is a way to honor somebody else's gifts. Like when I pay my mentor, it's like I'm honoring her. My business coach, I'm honoring her. My teacher, I'm honoring him. And so so I I hope this provides a bit of a deeper insight in like how you are looking at money and resourcefulness and energy and your body and the autonomy and the sovereignty over this because it is massive. And we'll do another podcast on like soul the lessons of the soul, but you're going to get lessons on the soul when you align to higher timelines of abundance, of money, of impact, of relationship and standards and relationship and creating a beautiful relationship. And so take this week to reflect truly on like, 
where you might have been selling your soul because it's making you weak energetically. And all that matters is our energy body because we can instantly manifest money, resource provision when we're strong, but when we're weak, we can't. And that's the inverted reality, the inverted lies that you have been taught to keep you a slave to the system. Full stop there. If you want the tools to stop being a slave to the system, a slave to the government, a slave to just, we won't go deep down the rabbit hole today, but a slave to building somebody a life for somebody else while they sit on the throne and don't do anything. If you want to get out of that, like pyramid schemes, and you look at humanity, how it's built, it's not just like some businesses or pyramid schemes, like the high, the multi-level marketing, but there's many pyramid schemes all over reality and corporate and all of these things. And if you want to get out of that and get into a, a good, fair energy exchange, and be able to make money doing what you love, I highly recommend surrendering into abundance. I truly believe it is one of the best abundance courses, money courses that exist. And for the value, I could be charging, and I, people have told me this, five figures for that. It's 1888. Um, it is not five figures. There is so much in there. We've had people scaled $150,000 months. You can look at the... Um, it's up in my podcast, but you can also look at the testimonials on the landing page. We'll link it in the bio. Um, so as of right now, it's closing on the 18th. So don't wait. It won't be open for at least an another six months, maybe longer. We haven't launched in a year. And yeah, miracles have happened from this. Go to the landing page and just look at the bottom and the videos of people who have taken this course and the miracles that would have come. And it's not like a few people like the track record of the people who have taken this course and, and the things that have happened has basically been, I'd say 98%. Everyone who applied the tools, actually everybody had shifts. Some people had massive life-changing shifts. That was 98%. And the other 2% did have shifts and wins. And the only difference was um, they stopped applying the tools. Okay, I love you guys. And yeah, welcome to the Soul Manifestation Podcast. We'll be back next week.